what um and I said to Julie yesterday what my what my New Year's resolutions were, and she said, oh, and, and I told her what they were, and she said, oh, and how are they going for you? <laughs> she said with a laugh. Um, it can be hard, can't it? And especially when, uh, when, you, when, when change is needed, it takes effort and determination, and when life keeps going on and being busy, it can be hard to focus on those things. This week's Bible readings are about new beginnings, and we're going to use them to help us explore opportunities for ourselves to make new beginnings, both for ourselves and for our community, or to put it another way, how we reshape ourselves and our church community for a new purpose, and what might that purpose be. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we are the family of God, and we are called by God's name. And we are heirs of Christ's kingdom and born of the Spirit. Let us therefore come together in thanksgiving. Let's pray. Lord God, giver of light and life, by your word you bring everything into being. The far-flung galaxies and the tiniest atomic particle. You've given us a world to enjoy and to care for. Give us compassion in the use of its resources, wisdom in our stewardship of your gifts, and reverence for all that you have made. For Jesus' sake, amen. As we gather in this place, we give thanks for the Wiradjuri people and we acknowledge their commitment that their ancestors made across the generations to nurturing the land. And we also remind ourselves that Orange Uniting Church is a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of race, creed, age, gender, or cultural background. Our God has made us. We are gods. Let's enjoy our first video, our first piece of music, God, whose almighty word, chaos and darkness heard. This, uh, this old screen is showing us how old it is because it's a bit hard to read sometimes what's on there. But uh, if you, the top right, that was, you can maybe see that that was the choir of St. Albans Cathedral in London singing for us today. That was nice. Let's pray again. 
sorry, and as we start, I should say there's a, the, this prayer, you will find part of this prayer on the second side of your service sheet. So let us pray. Come, let us honor the powerful glory of our creator God. Let us worship God's majesty in the splendor of holiness. Together, let's pray. Lord God, how awesome you are. Your voice is powerful and majestic. The people on the right are number one. Once the earth, sorry, please say together. I, I, I let, can we start again? I didn't, I didn't uh, start this prayer very, very well. I apologize for that. Um, people on this side are number one. People on this side are number two. Let's go back a step. Lord God, we say together, Lord God, how awesome you are. Your voice is powerful and majestic. Once the earth was without shape, dark and empty. Then you spoke, awesome God, and light shone. You separated the light from the darkness. The whole world changed. You later sent your son, Jesus, to live and walk among us on the earth. His ministry heralded by John the Baptist, who baptized Jesus in the Jordan. The whole world changed, the sky split open, and your Holy Spirit came down like a dove. Then you spoke, awesome God, and continue to speak today through your Holy Spirit. Majestic, awesome, all-powerful God, we adore your holy name. Amen. We continue in prayer. Lord, when you came into the world, things changed. When we came into a relationship with you, things changed. Life became filled with a new sense of purpose and peace. But Lord, sometimes we let you down by doing wrong things or failing to do right things. Sometimes, Lord, through pride, stubbornness, or fear, we build barriers and keep others at arm's length. Even you, Lord, At times we give in to our weaknesses and temptations, failing to draw on your strength. At times we are troubled by difficult situations and find it hard to trust you. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to turn such things around and turn to you. Help us to learn from the past and drawing on your strength and peace, make a better future. Amen. Oh God, when Jesus was baptized, you spoke of your love for him. You showed your love for us through Jesus' death and resurrection. Through your love, the darkness of our wrongdoing is banished by the light of your forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, as I already said, good morning to you all and good morning if you're watching on Zoom today or going to be watching the recording a little bit later on. Good to have you with us wherever you are. There's a few little announcements today. I know, Chris, would you like to say something? If you come up to the microphone, please, so we can hear you. Just mind, we'll come around that way because of the cables. Yep. <laughs> all right, Jess. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's happening with our Hot Meals outreach. Um, it, it certainly is, I believe, a work that God wants us to do. And we are receiving such generous donations from people in regards to the, the treats that um, Andrew very kindly puts out the request for each week. What I'd like to say is that if, if you are doing that for us, we are more than happy to reimburse you for the costs because we realise now that we actually served 169 meals last night. So that's just gone, you know, <laughs> way beyond any of our expectations, which is a wonderful thing. Um, and the response to the request for some, you know, the, what we call the treats uh, was magnificent yesterday, so much so that we actually had enough 
to take, it, take us through till next week so we won't need any more. However, if you were planning to make some, we're always happy to freeze them. We actually have freezer space now because we literally cleaned out the, the freezer yesterday with everything, including our, our, our frozen meals as well. But please do not hesitate to um, present us with those, those um, dockets for reimbursement because we really appreciate what everybody's doing and we just want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts because we believe that this, this work, this mission is just something that um, has gone beyond our expectation and just you know reinforces to us how wonderful our God is, that people are in need and, and we and our, our, our congregation are able to serve the community the way we do. So thank you everyone again and as I've always said, Prayer is probably the best thing you can do for us. So obviously you have been praying, <laughs> seeing we're looking at 169 meals. That is just amazing. And a big thank you for everyone who, who helps in any way at all, uh, and particularly the people on the ground on the night because uh, it can get a bit hectic at times. But, you know, God, again, has his hand on it and everything always works out for the best. So, again, thanks very much. And, uh, yep, don't hesitate to ask for reimbursement because we just want to show you we appreciate it. Remember... We have been um, uh, provided with funds through both what are they called? K K K yeah, through Newcrest, Newcrest, and then the City Council just before Christmas um, came to the party with ten thousand dollars. So we've got we've got the money to make sure that we keep going, and we don't want people to feel that you know they can't help because they can't you know afford it. And by the same token, even if you can afford it, it it's still something that you you we'd like to share with you because um, we just appreciate so much everything that, that comes into this mission and, um, and helps us continue with it. Thank you. Thanks, Christine, and thanks to everyone else as well who is involved week by week. There's the people who set up and the people who cook and the people who clean up and the people who serve and all of that stuff that happens. So thank you all. Any other announcements that we need to know about this week? I'll be on leave from Friday for a week, so we'll be away. Um, Bev Rankin is taking the service next Sunday, and then I'll be back the week after that. And of course, as usual, we, we keep, keep listening and keep being aware as to what the COVID restrictions are. They haven't changed for us here, but as we're aware, those of you, I know if anybody here was at Birdie's Cafe last week, presumably you weren't because you wouldn't be here if you were, um, last Sunday after church. But it's the kind of thing that you can just think very naturally after church, you're going to go for a coffee. And that's how easily you can get caught up in this whole whole story of pandemic. So we keep being careful. Uh, we keep being cautious. Uh, as you saw, I was wearing a mask on the way in uh, as I had a chat with you, and I'll be doing the same again on the way out. But as before, masks are not compulsory if you feel more comfortable without one. That is absolutely, that's absolutely fine. Well, I've got another image for you to look at this week. Those of you who have the, have the um, news of the, the sheet will see it. Uh, those of you maybe looking on camera, those of you looking on camera, as you can see, it's a, somebody with a blank canvas, an artist. And the question is, as we come to the beginning of a year and we're thinking about new beginnings what would you write here again you don't need to shout anything out it is it's for it's for thought and reflection although happy to hear your sharing if you'd like to but as you come to this time of year what would you write how would you see the year going if you had a blank canvas and could put on there what you want And have you ever been aware of experiencing a fresh start? It could be in relationship, it could be spiritually, it could be, um, it could be a, health, a health concern, it could be financial, it could be a job, whatever it might be. But maybe you've experienced a fresh start at some point. And with that, no doubt, a mix of emotions. Maybe something that you keep reflecting on this week. Well, we're going to hear our first uh, our readings, and first of all, an introduction to Genesis. And Margaret's going to come and read that. Yeah. 
In the beginning, a song of creation. The singer sang, and the lamps of heaven glowed and tumbled along the Milky Way, urged onward by the music. The singer sang, and planets cartwheeled among the stars in pure delight. The singer sang, and the mountains skipped, the rivers gushed, and oceans swirled in rhythm with the tune. The singer sang, and all was spring at once, bud and leaf greening the earth. The singer sang, and dolphins danced among the waves, goats skittered across the rocks, as eagles flowed along the thermals. The singer sang, and humanity rose from the dust, catching the dying echoes of the song. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning, the first day. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. John the Baptist was in the wilderness, calling for people to be baptised to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were baptised by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. <clears throat> he announced, One stronger than I am is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to bend over and loosen the straps of his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptised him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the spirit, like a dove, coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven. You are my son, whom I dearly love. In you, I find happiness. This is the word of the Lord.
pray. Our God, thank you for these readings from Scripture where you give light, where you wash, where you cleanse, where you renew. May your Spirit do all that and more for us today as we consider your word. Amen. The story of creation from Genesis is a story with so much in it, and yet the reading that we got today was just a short first few verses, the first day. Maybe that's enough to focus on. Just gives us the start of that story of creation in Genesis. Now, of course, the reading has been selected to fit with the other readings for this week when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. We heard the gospel passage of Mark chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. John the Baptist and his baptizing Jesus in the River Jordan. The third reading, which we haven't read today, is from Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 7. And it tells the story of Paul baptizing some Christians in Ephesus. So we're invited to read the beginning of Genesis in that context. Our focus in Genesis 1 is on the description of chaos before God commences the act of creation. It's described in watery terms, the deep and waters. This not only makes the link between the waters of baptism or with the waters of baptism, but specifies creation in Genesis 1 as a matter of bringing order out of watery chaos. The baptism of Jesus by John and of new Christians by Paul in the name of Jesus are thereby these baptisms are thereby connected back to creation itself. Baptism into the community of Jesus is fulfillment of God's intent in creation itself. The words in Genesis, which represent the disorder before creation, are translated formless void, or a vast waste, or formless and empty, or a formless wasteland, depending on which version of scripture you read. These words are describing a total nothingness where no form of any sort exists and where the fundamental elements necessary for life, such as light, are absent. As such, the earth was without order and without creative or even redemptive purpose. The spirit of God sweeps over the waters like a wind. The word for spirit or wind there is ruach, a Hebrew word, meaning air in motion or wind, but in this case, the creative breath of God. From this creative breath comes the first words of creation, let there be light. God's breath is the spirit of life and light is how it's seen first. The light is considered good by God as we see in verse four. Now it may seem strange that light is created here in day one, while the sun and the moon are only referred to on day four. The presentation of creation in Genesis one is not simply set out in a logical order that reflects creation itself. It's not a scientific journal listing how <laughs> creation happened, especially when we understand our modern view of the way things came to be. It's a poetic presentation and language in such contexts is not always logical or literal in meaning. Rather, it's used to evoke feelings or express deep truths that may even defy logic. Also, the light mentioned in Genesis chapter one, verse three, does not just refer to the light, which has its origin in the sun and stars, as we might explain it. The light spoken of in Genesis one, three, which comes into being at an illogical time, well before the sun and moon appear, is a supernatural light emanating from the Lord. That's one way of looking at it in this poem, in this story of creation. And just as light is life-giving, so all that is necessary for life, for the maintenance of creation, comes to us from God. 
This emphasis on light recalls a theme of the Feast of Epiphany, which we thought about last week, which celebrates how God shines into the world, a light in Jesus Christ. What is celebrated in the baptism of Jesus and by extension in the baptism of each and every one of us is something far greater than the incorporation of just one individual into community. It is that, but it's more. It shares in the coming of the Lord to creation and proclaims that coming, proclaims that Jesus is with us. It's part of God's granting of life to all creation as he brings creation to fulfillment. The Gospel of Mark for the day extends this symbol in the description of the coming of Jesus Christ into the chaos of the world. He has come to bring life to those who have been through the waters of baptism by John. And Jesus will then baptize them with the creative spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And into the formlessness and chaos of their lives and our lives will come redemption and God's creative purpose. In such new life, the purpose of God for humanity grows towards its full manifestation, its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. In that gospel reading, we find John clearly asserting that the one to come is his superior, who will baptize with the spirit as he baptized with water. As we read on, we discover the one who will baptize with the spirit. Here, we discover Jesus. Jesus is both the person of whom John spoke and the spirit uh, and the spirit with which he will baptize. So here we see both the person of whom John spoke and the spirit with which he will baptize descending like a dove. When the word spirit does appear in Mark's gospel, which is not very frequently, it comes at points which confirm that Mark sees John's prophecy being fulfilled in Jesus' ministry. The spirit takes Jesus away into the wilderness we see how Jesus describes his exorcisms as works of the Spirit. And so, baptizing with the Spirit, according to Mark, is, is carrying the Spirit to people in a way that brings release and freedom. In this Gospel reading, we discover Jesus as the bearer or the carrier of the Spirit that will be offered to all people. The gift of the Spirit kick-started Jesus' ministry, leading him to preach and teach and challenge injustice wherever he found it. And for the converts in Ephesus too, if you read that uh, story from Acts, the Spirit led them to prophesy and to speak out in their community. And of course, the Spirit prompts us today and invites us to speak and share and bear God's light into the community that we live seeking to help and journey with God to bring order out of chaos. As already said earlier, many people begin the new year with resolutions that may or may not last beyond the end of January or to the 10th of January, as the case may be. Some of these resolutions are more realistic than others. Some people may well share, as we did last Sunday, in something like the covenant service, where you make a spiritual commitment to God. I'm no longer my own, but yours. Maybe those spiritual commitments that we make at the start of the year should be the ones that we focus on most. Because through the work of God's spirit, that is where the light shines in, in our own lives and ultimately then in the community after that. We read about how John's mission was to prepare the way for the Lord, to create the circumstances in which change could happen. He built a group of people whose lives were oriented towards the promise of a new future, ready and waiting for Jesus. His call was to the steady and patient work of preparation, laying the foundations for all that Jesus would do. How highly do we value that kind of work? And do we value our own work enough 
when it does not lead to immediate change. Often we see it demands a steady, patient commitment to preparation, laying the foundation for all that Jesus, or laying the foundation for all that God will do as the Spirit will move through these actions that we take. We hope to see order from chaos, and through God, we will and do see order from chaos, but maybe not as quickly as we always desire. The world in which we live, as we have seen this week, and as with many other weeks, is a world with much chaos. We have seen Brisbane go into a sudden three-day lockdown in Australia. We've seen that as a result of the nervousness about this, the UK, as it's called, the UK variant of this virus, which is more contagious, more sticky, and so goes from one person to another more easily. We've seen the chaos of the United States this week, and as many commentators have said, shocking and surprising, but on the other side, not surprising at all, given how it has been encouraged and pushed over these last few years. We do see a world in chaos, and perhaps within our own lives as well, as we come to the start of this year, we see some chaos. The need, perhaps, for ourselves in certain areas to find balance, and to find calm, and to find peace. Here, in this reading, the readings that we've heard, we are reminded again of the God who brings and restores uh, uh, brings calm and restoration through, in chaos. We are called by John, by Jesus, by Paul, by the story of creation itself, to look to our God, to realize some of the things that we may need to put aside, and to walk with him, knowing that the Spirit is with us as we step into this year. Let's turn to our psalm, which you'll find on the back of your service sheet. This is a responsive psalm, if you would respond in the words in bold. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl, strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. We're going to watch a video of a poem now, a poem by a poet called Joel McCarrow. I heard Joel speak, um, perform at Synod a few years ago, and he encouraged us to write some poetry as well, which is not something that I, I do very much. And uh, he, uh, yeah, he, was, he was pretty inspiring, but different. Hannah, Hannah or Eli saw this when I was playing it the other day and said, why is he talking like that? But watch this poem, enjoy it, uh, as it's, and it's called One Planet.
let's just say, just purely hypothetically, of course, I know it's, it's completely ridiculous, but what if we had only one planet, just one? One planet to live on, one planet to eat and breathe from, one planet to make our day upon, make our way upon, make our cities upon, sink our teeth into one ocean, one sky, one people, one life, one time that we can make this right. We miss the point on so many things. The real stuff gets lost in the wrapping, the heart of the matter drowned in an ocean of argument. The earth chokes and we bicker about the smoke and the science and the wind and whose fault it could never be. Forget she lies grasping for clean air. We argue the science, forgetting the math that the earth is a birthday cake and if there are 10 people at the party yet only one cake and I eat the whole thing then somebody must be starving to death around here. If everybody ate cake at the same rate that I do we would need three more chocolate velvet and dirt. We have eaten too much of this earth mouth smothered in cream, making ourselves sick from the icing. In the past 30 years of birthday celebrations, we have eaten one third of this cake already, taken one third of her forests already. Look at my pudgy fingers and my rolling belly. I am Augustus Gloop at the party. Yes, somebody must be starving to death around here. Let me break it down for us. There are 10 trees tall on day one and only two are left standing on day four. We shall never make it through this week. I have taken much more than my fair share. But forget about the maths. What about the people? What about Rosalie from Mozambique? Her crops are washed away by the floods that only ever came once in a lifetime, yet now they rush the shore every other day. Or what about Manju, northern India? She has never heard of the phrase climate change. She just knows the years of failed rains. She has never seen weather like this before. Every day she struggles to keep her family from starving as we forget the mother working tirelessly in her fields. We forget the father digging trenches around gardens. We forget the son digging holes to mine coal. We forget the daughter waist deep in flooded waters. We forget because it is easier this way bliss of ignorance, the kiss of indifference. Yet from the bottom of this ocean, to the tips of the tops of the peaks that touch the sky, to the cities and the factories on the surface of her skin, to the smoke and the smut that we cover her in, we forget that we have only ever had one planet, one ocean, one sky, one people, one life, for one time that we can make this right. Happy birthday, world. Let us blow out the candles of our indifference. And this year, I promise to eat less cake. you probably couldn't read what that said on the screen just then because the screen is so bad um, it says if everyone lived like an Australian we would need three planets to sustain us and of course that's not just Australia that's every country like Australia so Ireland where I'm from and European countries the United States and, and New Zealand so that's you can't see it but that's what that says there um, Looking at that video, that poem, any response? 
Is there anything within it that gives you concern? Particularly in response to hearing about God and creation. It really was hard to fly, even now the little one is on the phone. You can't help some of the narratives that may have received. Mm. So Karen said we can play small parts. Um, Cole? Mm, so more, some more of the kind of things where we support people and yeah, give food. Um, but and I, I really liked the line in it as well. It's not about arguing about science because, let's be honest, we live in a country where people have different views on the science on this. Mm -hmm. But it's about the maths, maybe, or about the reality. And it's not even just about us giving more. But I think the point here was about us using less and how we do that and how we encourage not just ourselves, but our communities, our governments. That is our challenge. Well, first of all, let's now have a prayer to acknowledge our offering and that will lead into our prayers Let's pray. Loving God, you have given us a world to care for and people to love. Keep us mindful of what you call us to do and not to neglect your creation or our fellow human beings. We offer you our all, the offerings that we bring this day. Help us and those offerings to be a part of new beginnings for ourselves and for others. And so we pray for the world. Eternal God, it feels as if the whole world has changed. And yet in you, there is stability and the opportunity of a new beginning. So we pray now for those whose lives are in turmoil those whose lives have been turned upside down, those who feel lost. May they feel supported and find fresh hope. We pray for those for whom the lockdowns this week have come as a relief, for those who now feel safer, but we pray too for those who now feel desperate, alone, and worried about their jobs, their finances, their mental health. May they feel supported and find fresh hope. We pray for the people of a divided United States of America. At this time of political and racial tension and transition for outgoing President Donald Trump and President-elect Joe Biden. We pray particularly for healing following the events of this week. We pray too for countries around the world struggling with ethnic violence and militancy. We remember the people of West Africa and in particular the people of Niger, villagers who live in fear, those who have been wounded in recent attacks and those who have been bereaved. May they feel supported and find fresh hope. We pray for those who have been injured or lost their homes and loved ones in the severe weather, remembering particularly the people of Norway affected by landslides, the people of Spain affected by blizzards, people of all nations of this world, known to us and unknown, where the weather and the climate is affecting their daily life. We pray for those who work in the emergency services, for those whose work is dangerous and traumatic. We 
compared with those in refugee camps with little protection from the weather. Those who sleep rough, those who can't afford to heat their homes, may they feel supported and find fresh hope. And we pray for one another, our families, our communities, our church fellowships. May we support those who are unwell or grieving. May we bring fresh hope to those who feel forgotten and are vulnerable. And may we, both practically and prayerfully, share our faith in your Son, Jesus, in whose name we entrust these prayers to you. Amen. So let's keep our eyes open this week for opportunities to practice new beginning, to step out with God. And we go with this final hymn that we're going to enjoy together, Christ be our light. Anybody else think we should invest in those life things? <laughs> Don't know how they do it. But. Anyway, as we go, let's pray. Lord, help us to be open to your prompting as we seek to discover what you would have us be and do. Remind us again and again that you have promised to be our guide and companion on our journey. Help us to look forward with renewed commitment and bless our thinking and speaking and doing. In your name. Amen. Mm -hmm.